Howdy. Question for Brian. Let's start off here in front. Uh, Nick House from House of Wrestling. Uh, Brian, uh, man, wow, that was a banger. That was an absolute classic you put on there tonight. Uh, how? Uh, we all saw this x-ray that your wife shared. Your arm looked like it had been snapped in two. What, what did you do to be able to come back so quickly and perform as you did tonight? Uh, so, so one, uh, I had an excellent opponent tonight. And I think every time people see Ricky Starks, every time Ricky Starks gets an opportunity, he knocks it out of the park. And I will be the first one to say, and this is outside of like, within our stories and what we do, he carried me through that match tonight. And I'm good, I'm good at certain things. I mean, I'm good at a decent amount of things and I'm confident in saying that. Uh, I can fire up, I can do all these things, but he was the one who carried it, who carried me through that match. And so I'm just, that's what I'm gonna say. Dominic D'Angelo inside the ropes. Uh, I kind of want to get your perspective too. Uh, the ending of that match was pretty epic in a lot of ways. It reflected uh, Steve Austin. Yeah, that's when you get the team. Uh, kind of wanted to get your guys' vibe uh, on Ricky Starks, kind of establishing himself maybe as a top star moving forward. Brian, and as a quick follow up, last time I asked you about the books you're reading, what are you currently reading? Oh gosh. Um, so. Asking me about the finish, one of the things that we do in the Black Bull Combat Club is we like to test people. We like to push people. And part of that is story, and part of that is real. And I have never wrestled Ricky Starks before. Never. We've never touched. We've never done anything. I've always watched him, and I thought, every time I see him, this guy is a star. He did that interview last night before I came out, and I was watching. And when he started talking about Big Bill, he also gets it. He's he's like he's putting he's talking great. He's helped Big Bill in that thing, and he didn't have to. There, you know. And so, anyways, um, I wanted to see. Okay, I've seen him. I've watched him, and this is my thing with a lot of people that I've seen and watched, I think, I think this guy is good. Let me see how good he is. And also, certain wrestlers don't like some of the intensity I bring. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, when you're in a situation like that, some people wilt and some people fire up. He fired up. And, uh, the end of that match is a representation of him being a gutsy performer. Let's change him from just, I'm hoping fans see him in a way <coughs> now that, okay, he's very entertaining and he's good at that, but he's also gutsy. And, um, and so yeah, that's the, uh, and as far as books, so I, just finished reading The Art of Impossible by Stephen Cutler. <coughs> I'm in the middle. I, or I just finished fiction-wise Black Sun and in, in the middle of the second book in that trilogy. And then I've been really revisiting Mary Oliver's poetry. I just, I feel like you can never, you can never get enough of it. It's like you reread it and you see things more every time you read it. So, yep. Cool, thank you. Thank you. I'm Brian Denise Salcedo. I wanted to ask you, given the success of AEW All In, I wanted to get your thoughts on the show and everything that happened. So, uh, I loved it. As somebody who loves wrestling, loves wrestling, still loves wrestling. I've been wrestling for 24 years and I still love wrestling. I, uh, I was like, oh man, I don't know how they're going to top that. And then I go, oh. I don't know how they're going to top that. And when you go out there and do what Mox and Orange Cassidy did in the main event, after all the great wrestling before that, I think it's very hard to argue that John Moxley is not the best wrestler in the world. And there was a time when I would have said that about myself. 
But I find it very hard to argue that John Moxley's not the best. And and one of the only arguments against that might be Orange Cassidy. So I I was just thrilled with the show. I was thrilled with the Chicago crowd. It was uh yeah, it felt like an epic event as I'm watching it. Um, with the boys in the locker room and we're watching it and we're high-fiving and we're like that was awesome that was awesome around the monitor around the monitor during that main event with Mox and Orange Cassidy I was around at least six people go, oh and to get wrestlers who see everything to go oh oh <laughs> one there was one thing and I can't remember quite what it was I was eating an apple <laughs> I was eating an apple and I'm like oh and like, I had to run to the other side because I was choking on this apple and spitting it out. And then, hey, are you okay? Are you okay? And then, yeah, it was, it, but like, it was great. You watch a wrestling show that's that, that's that good. You can't help but get like excited and have fun. And yeah, it's great. Hi, Brian. Uh, Phil from Mitch Report. Um, Obviously, you stepped in tonight to replace CM Punk in the storyline of ongoing with Collision. Uh, you also, there was talks early on of you stepping in the creative world on Collision. Um, how much are you interested in stepping into that boy going forward with Collision and helping out with segments? Uh, I mean, one of the ethics that I believe in is you step up when you need to step up. Right, that's an ethic. It's uh, it's interesting when you're crossing between real life and story things when you're talking about it. But when we're us as the BCC, as a collective, who are real friends, who we take stepping up seriously, whether that is in story or in real life. And I think nobody's a better example of that than John Moxley, who has stepped up every time that we need him to. And so that's the thing. Um, I, I just see it as kind of a way of life for us as far as, hey, if you need us, if like, okay, if there's something that needs to happen, I'll say, hey, Tony, I can do this. Or, or Mox will say, I can do this. There is nothing that if Tony needs that we won't do for him, right? And that goes with creative, that goes with doing a match tonight, that goes with anything, you know, anything like that. Over here, Ryan. Brian, first off, congratulations on a phenomenal match tonight. Uh, Leo Angelo with Distracted by Wrestling. And I have a question, so where do we see the BCC go from here? Because after last night of collision, you came out to a thunderous applause and a round of cheers. And whereas lately the BCC has been showing very, how do you say, crazy tactics. <laughs> <laughs> so where would you say you now with you returning you do fall into put like in place along with their antics? Oh, I mean I like to think that we we can straddle the line between anything. I like so I didn't wrestle necessarily today like a good guy. I strapped Ricky Starks in the face. <laughs> uh, but I love Ricky Steamboat, and he uh, refereed a match between me and Loki in 2001 that really helped put my career on the map. Um, he refereed, he's refereed actually multiple of my matches. He was a producer for me in WWE when I was there. Um, he is just a legendary figure in professional wrestling who continues to give and give and give. And so like, uh, so coming out to say to do this thing with him, it puts me in a good guy role, but you could also see me at the very end stabbing somebody with a screwdriver, right? <laughs> like like there, there's nothing, there's nothing that's, oh, Brian Danielson wouldn't do that. Like he might do that. <laughs> so, so, and I think that's within the realm of our, of our characters. Hey Brian, Mike Shalek from SC Scoops. Incredible match tonight, just beautifully violent. It was really something. Um, you've laid out a couple of reasons already why you competed tonight. You know, feeling the desire to step up, to work with Ricky Steamboat, to work with Ricky Starks. Um, you're returning 
about a month sooner than you know the conventional wisdom was that it was your time frame for returning. Um, should we consider you back full time now, or was this just like a summer night? And how's the arm feeling after tonight? So the arm feels great. Uh, Nigel McGuinness has succinctly pointed out many times at this point that we have 206 bones in our body, 205 of mine are perfectly okay. And, um, and even the 206 is, uh, is almost impenetrable at this point. Um, but we have great doctors here and there's, there's a certain magic to pro wrestling, you know, like uh, I've talked about this before, magicians don't necessarily reveal their secrets, but because we have the best best fans in the world here at AEW, and people are legitimately concerned for my safety, so I will pull back the curtain a little bit in this. There was a lot of smoke and mirrors tonight, and I was in no danger whatsoever, other than the regular danger that you could do getting a, a hip toss, but I didn't even throw a strike with my right arm. And I don't think anybody noticed. And, um, and so there are all these things that you can do to uh, avoid, and especially where, where I'm at in the healing process. And we talked to not just Dr. Sampson, who I love, and he, you know, and we went through every single thing in that with him, but we talked to the surgeon, who has no interest, it, he, it doesn't matter to him if I wrestle on this pay-per-view or not. It, it, like, he's just giving us his recommendation and to say like, hey, can, can I do this? What do you think about this? And so all of that was talked through with doctors. So it was like, I felt very comfortable doing it. The company felt very comfortable doing it. Our doctors, outside doctors, felt very comfortable with us doing it. And, uh, and yeah, here I am, and I feel great. Back here, Brian. Brian Rowan, Scoop Number Wrestling. How important was tonight and this weekend helping the company move forward? Oh, I mean, yeah. Tonight was awesome. And last week was awesome. And I think that's, that's the thing. The, there's things that are behind us, but we're moving forward. And we're moving forward in a way that it's exciting. It's exciting. It's ex like AEW is a product to be excited about right now, and um, and I think that that showed that showed on Sunday, that showed tonight, that showed on Dynamite and, and Collision, and so yeah, I think uh, like everybody's everybody's stoked and we're excited to to do what we do. You want to ride? Steve Milhausen from his own Brian, great match. This question for really you and Tony, the crowd went nuts for Final Countdown, and it seemed like that was a one-time thing at Forbidden North. Is that going to be more of a permanent fixture, Tony? Or? Well, it's uh, not all dependent on me, like trades and sports, it's sometimes uh, everything's in, you know, two parties' hands, or multiple parties' hands in this case. So I would love to use Final Countdown again. Hopefully we can keep working it out. I uh, got it for two pay-per-views and we were able to use it on these two great shows and I think it was awesome to have that moment in Toronto at Forbidden Door and awesome to come back to Chicago for All Out and have uh, Final Countdown here in Chicago. It means a lot to me personally because I'm such a huge fan of wrestling and in particular I'm a huge fan of Brian Danielson and to have Brian come out to Final Countdown Again, the first time I went, as he'll tell, attest, I went absolutely crazy. It meant a lot to me and a lot of people backstage. And then to do it again tonight and have the Chicago fans get that experience. I think everybody who heard the crowd, they went nuts for it. I'd love to do it again. And I think it really is beneficial also to the band and to the rights holders because we've seen, well, we, I, track the, I track the charts and you know, I haven't been able to look tonight, but I did look around Forbidden Door and Final Countdown moved way up in the iTunes charts, up into uh, like a high position and stayed there 
uh, for a while after the Toronto Forbidden Door show, and I'm sure tonight, again, there's gonna be more downloads, more streams of Final Countdown, so when artists work with us and let us license the music, and we use a lot of great music in AEW, I really believe it's beneficial in multiple ways, because I'll pay a licensing fee, gladly, uh, because we use great music, and I'm happy to pay for it, but also, uh, you know, it's good because I think it gets more downloads and streams for them too. Uh, but definitely Final Countdown, I was excited to use it because as far as I know, uh, Forbidden Door in Toronto and All Out Tonight in Chicago are the first two times in your career that the song has been used legally with permission. <laughs> It's, uh, it's really fun for me and also sometimes really frustrating because um, Final Countdown is one of those things that just gets stuck in your head. So like, uh, I was just in the locker room before this and there were multiple people, yeah, multiple people going da -da 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 and like, then it gets stuck in my head and I'm walking. It, it, internally, I'm not actually humming it, but in, internally I'm going da -da 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 and so yeah. Also, it's like, uh, I was super, I've never wrestled in the United Center before. Last, yesterday was my first time um, in the United Center, ever. Uh, every time I see a Bulls jersey, I'm sorry Chicago, I get a little bit bigger because of the 96 NBA Finals. I was a huge Super Sonics fan. I wanted to tell Dennis Rodman that Sean Kemp owned him in that series, but I did not. Uh, <laughs> you guys still won! I still at the time, no Seattle franchise had ever won any world championship since I had been alive. So if I, if I held on to a grudge for a little bit too long, you have to give me that. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's just really cool to hear it in the United Center when I did so many Ring of Honor shows here in Chicago uh, with that. And to, it, you know, and one of, this is one of the things that's fascinating about wrestling and wrestling fans is you would think that people wouldn't know about that because when I was at my most popular you know they I didn't come out to that it was you know I thought it was a niche thing and then when and I knew maybe in Toronto and that sort of thing well maybe there will be some people who will be into it but uh, to have two shows like this where it came out and there's so many people uh, were into it was was really cool. Last awesome. question for Brian. On your side? Yep. Yeah, well, Brandon Thurston of Uh Recently in an interview, Tony said that if, if anything ever happens to him, there's, there's one person to hand all the responsibility over to, and that was you. Um, that would be a lot of responsibility, Brian. Oh. Nobody wants that, believe me. Nobody, yeah. wants my job. Nobody wants my job. He's seen it a yeah, lot yeah. up close. So as, as time goes on and you know, people get older and maybe you wrestle less, is that something you see for yourself to be even more of a leader backstage and with creative and things like that? Yeah, so I, you know, it's hard because I love that aspect of it so much, but I also love being with my family and um, and going to shows uh, takes you away from your family. And my daughter, oh my, my poor wife, she, I told her, like, hey, you know, is, you know, things might happen tonight. And she watched the show tonight with our kids. And our, <laughs> and our son, who's three years old, he's so great, but he's also a maniac. Our daughter, who's six, she was terrified. Our son, buddy, loved it. She's like, oh yeah, it's like, hit daddy more. Like, hey, this, is, this, yeah. uh, this is great. But our daughter, she says to me, uh, she says to me things like this. Daddy, you're gonna be done wrestling when I, when I turn seven, right? Like, you're gonna be home every day when I turn seven. And that's, that's really hard. That's really hard to turn down, right? Like, and, you know, we, I have been very fortunate to have this thing that I love, that I do, um, a huge part of my life for 23 plus years. But then, it, at one point it was, it felt like, if not the most important thing, one of the most important things. But then new things become important things. And uh, seeing my kids, do the things that they love to do and being there for them because and also being there for my wife because 
if you, any of you are parents or single parents, single parenting is hard, like uh, regardless of what you do. And so all of that to say, uh, I've got, I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of thinking to do. It's not like, the, all, all of that to say is that's not a no, it's a how do I make this work with, while still keeping the meaningful things in my life, like the things that I find to be important, putting them as a top priority. So that's, that's really, if you can figure that out, if you can figure out this little jigsaw puzzle or whatever it is of how to balance running a wrestling company with, <laughs> with, uh, with two kids and being able to go to their soccer games or going to go to my daughter's dance recitals or going to any of that kind of stuff. Uh, I mean, those are those are just puzzles to figure out. Or sometimes, you know, the pieces don't fit, and then it's and then I've had a good run, and it might be time to move on. You know what I mean? So I'm also not planning to get hit by a bus, <laughs> or, or, but you never know. And seriously, I told my dad, you never know. But if anything did happen to me, that would be the person I think we could do the most for you in, in everybody respects. And I, I think everyone uh, knows he's one of the smartest people in wrestling and one of the most respected. Definitely, uh, for me, uh, you know, I, I hope as we go into these coming weeks, it feels like maybe working on Saturdays might be good for your work-life balance yes, too. Yes, yes, absolutely. And then, uh, and then also to say that professional wrestling has given me so much, and AEW and Tony have given me so much. And if for whatever reason. Even if it's not him getting hit by a bus, uh, if I could step in and and help during a time of need, I would probably do it because that's um, this place is. I love pro wrestling like I mentioned before. This place is so good for professional wrestling. The fact that that, ex that this exists and the fact that Tony started this has made all of us within the professional wrestling lives, or within the professional wrestling world, has made all of our lives better. And it's given talent more options when there weren't options before. It, um, it gives the fans of professional wrestling different things to watch and different styles to watch. You can, there's a difference between watching Dynamite and watching Collision. So even in, within AEW, it's giving you different flavors. And so I hesitate to think what it would be like if Tony had never started AEW. Um, it's kind of weird to think about it because we lived in that realm with no WCW um, and no like real major secondary promotion until Tony started AEW. We lived in, the, in that realm for, what was that? Because it was 2001, so. 18, 19 years, right? And it was really like, in the last couple of years, first of all, our pay-per-view numbers have really consistently, all, from the very beginning of AEW, been far ahead of the pay-per-view numbers WCW put up in the last few years. So really, the 90s would be the last time there was that kind of legitimate uh, challenger brand in pro wrestling. I call it a challenger brand. And what's really cool is there was a time that WCW rose to be more than a challenger brand. They were an industry leader. And in major markets, WCW was the number one, and there were business metrics where WCW 96, 97, 98 was the number one wrestling company in the world. And it's really exciting for us because, you know, like you talked about, when we launched as a challenger promotion, that's what we aim to be. But now there's markets, there's really important parts of the pro wrestling business where AEW is number one. We've sold the most tickets of any sold wrestling show. Sold the most ever. tickets of any wrestling show ever. Who would have thought that five years ago, right? And. Um, and it's just incredible, and it's not just giving giving wrestlers more options from a, from an employment perspective. There's all the people backstage that are that get jobs from this too, and so it's just yeah, uh, yeah. It's just an incredible it's an incredible thing that this exists, and so and it and it requires and it requires a lot of work. So thanks, man. Well, it's uh, it, I can't say that anybody, uh, whether it's in the ring or behind the scenes, there's nobody. Uh, I've ever met that's more dedicated to pro wrestling and more selfless and willing to give to other wrestlers and uh, give to the sport than Brian Danielson and 
I think that's why his legacy is going to endure forever. He's one of the greatest wrestlers ever. Uh, I love working with Brian. Uh, this year, especially, uh, have gotten to spend more time with him, getting to know him better and better, and uh, really love to bounce ideas off him and talk to him every week about stuff. I think my travel schedule and the work schedule I keep up is so ridiculous that uh, you know, for a few weeks, Brian like flew with me, and uh, I think that was uh, that was ill fated. He couldn't keep up with the ridiculous pace that is my that is me. And he made a really good recommendation to me for me to get uh, like a a production. I, not, I don't know what the best word to use is, but somebody to help me as a coordinator, like who travel with me, help me keep myself organized, like an organizer to work with me because I do so much and I do so much stuff. And somebody who picked, comes up with really good ideas, somebody who's also really selfless and has the same spirit, and that was Jimmy Jacobs. And Jimmy came in, it was Brian's idea. Jimmy flies everywhere with me, everywhere I go. Hmm. And it was a great idea by Brian, because now I have somebody like, who goes everywhere, you move to Jacksonville. And uh, the, the big backyard that is Jacksonville, Florida, where I do have all the booking, uh, he's, you know, to have somebody I can fly in and out of uh, every show with, it's really great. It was a great suggestion for Brian, and I think it probably helped you get back to the good work-life balance for you, where you don't have to fly everywhere with me every show. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but I think uh, it's been really good this year because we added Collision. So going from three hours a week of wrestling television to five hours is a major, major leap. And now we've been doing more events. Last year we stepped it up. We had done four pay-per-views the year before. And uh, last year we added Forbidden Door. That was a huge success, biggest debut of any of the events. But somebody who was supposed to be a huge part of the event was Brian. So it really meant a lot to me this year to be able to have Brian involved in Forbidden Door, have the show be even bigger, sell more tickets, sell more pay-per-views, and have Brian in the main event versus Okada to see who the greatest wrestler of all is. And, uh, Brian and then we just find out it's John Moxley. <laughs> and, and then tonight, the international title, and that's a great segue for what's going on in AEW. John Moxley uh, knocked it out of the park for us again. And John Moxley, the most decorated star ever in AEW, the three-time world champion, and now the, the international champion. And I think it's really cool. The international title was established by Pac, who's one of AEW's great wrestlers, and like Brian, is somebody uh, along with Brian and Jamie Hayter great stars of AEW. I really was hoping Pac also would be wrestling at Wembley Stadium. Pac's the first ever champion, uh, first person ever to hold that title. He was actually the double champion, also held the World Trios Championship. And he established the title, defended it around the world, and really made it and helped set the grounds for what became this great international title. And then there's Orange Cassidy. I think, like you said, if, there, if there's somebody else who's also in the conversation, there's you, there's John Moxley, there's a lot of great wrestlers in the world, a lot of people on top. Orange Cassidy this year has had such an amazing year. And I know you've said it, you've said it here in front of the media, a lot of these same people, and just in the scrum in general, and uh, backstage, and definitely so many people feel that way that Orange Cassidy's been a top person for AEW this year and, and in the world of wrestling. I think he really did so much then for the international championship. I thought it was very fitting that he won the championship from Pac, which was you know, a match I really believe strongly in to have the title change hands in Canada, first international title change, fittingly enough. And Pac, Orange Cassidy is a great rivalry in and of itself. It's a trivia question. I believe it's the only match in AEW ever to be watched over 40 million times. The Orange Cassidy Pac match has 40 million views online. And when you throw the pay-per-views in, over 40 million people have seen it. That's pretty crazy. So that rivalry started here. That was actually Orange Cassidy's first ever match. And I imagine a lot of you were there at Revolution 2020 when he debuted, and the crowd has been behind him from the beginning. But to see how far it's come, I really thought that the championship, international championship specifically, I thought that the international championship has become one of the most prestigious championships in wrestling, largely due to what Orange Cassidy has been doing week after week after week on TV, on all the different shows, and we've seen him on different nights of the week coming in, whether it was Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, having great matches, and uh, multiple pay-per-views, time after time, nearly a year he's been the champion, and I thought that he made the championship with his hard work, such a prestigious championship that one of the biggest stars in wrestling, John Moxley, would covet that championship, that John Moxley would want to chase that championship. And we did all in last week, and as I was saying before, Brian came in. A lot of people thought that maybe would have been on the all in card, but the all in card was huge. It was the biggest thing we've ever done, and people were thrilled. It was like a rave review show on every level the, the spectacle, the ticket sales, the record, 
uh, business and also just a great wrestling show and it was important then to come here and be able to deliver for Chicago, be able to deliver for All Out and say, now we've set a precedent that we do All In, we do All Out and people wonder, how are they going to follow All In? Well, we save big matches, but we still can do something great at Wembley Stadium and come back to Chicago. So it's unconventional, as we were asked before, is it unconventional to run uh, Wembley Stadium and then come run the United Center and do back-to-back pay-per-views? Maybe it's unconventional, but we delivered it. And I think when you have a roster this deep, you know, it shows that we can do it. And like you said, John Moxley in the main event delivered and showed why he's maybe the best wrestler in the world and why the international title is one of the top championships in all wrestling. Maybe the number one title, certainly the title that's gained the most ground in all of pro wrestling this year, and I would say in a really long time. Thank you, Brian. Yep. Thank you, guys. I, and especially with what has transpired over the week, thank you all for being so so professional with us and asking us great questions and just being uh, excellent in general. So thank you very much. Have a great night, guys. Imagine I do that. Okay, imagine I do that strap match and then I get her walking out the stage. That would be my life.